All right, I'd like to call to order the March 14th, 2023 meeting of the Columbia Heights School Board. Um, those who are able stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of, of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you and welcome. Uh, Mary, can you do the roll call, please? Absolutely. Madeiras? Here. Granlin? Here. Palmer? Here. Petway? Here. Poole? Here. Mueller? Here. Superintendent Stumbeck? Thank you very much. Our mission statement is creating worlds of opportunity for each and every learner. All belong, all succeed. Our core values are community, excellence, collaboration, integrity, respect, courage, and innovation. Um, first, we have our agenda approval adjustments, announcements, and correspondence. We'll start with the approval of the agenda. Can I get a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Laura, and a second? Second. Uh, Julie, um, any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Um, next, we have our announcements. On Monday, March 20th, there is no school. Um, March 21st, Tuesday at 5.30 p.m., we have the school board work session here in the community room. M uh, March 28th, Tuesday at 7 p.m., we have a regular school board meeting here in the community room. April 3rd through 7th, there is no school. And on April 11th, uh, Tuesday at 7 p.m., there's a regular school board meeting here in the community room. Um, next is correspondence. I'm assuming we have no correspondence. Thank, thank you, Don. Um, next, we have communication um, to the board. At this time, any citizen or employee may briefly address the school board. The board will listen to brief remarks, ask clarifying questions, and if desired, request that the administration follow up. The board will not take action at this meeting on requests presented at this time. We do have a three minute time limit per presenter. Um, we've got two, thank you, and we're back. Um, we had two staff members from uh, Columbia Academy come and talk to us about their experience at Columbia Academy um, and um, class sizes and what's going well and some challenges that they're having there. So we thank them for coming. Um, next, we will move on to our consent agenda. Our consent agenda includes the personnel report, um, our school board um, minutes from February 14th and 28th, the treasurer's report from December 2022, mini adventure um, and adventure club fees um, for the increase as presented on the February 28th school board meeting, and the policy um, second reading um, that appeared um, on the February 28th for the first reading, which are 203.2 uh, order of regular school board meeting, 604 um, instructional, instructional curriculum, 709 student transportation safety policy. Um, that is what is on our consent agenda. Can I get a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve. Laura, can I get a second? Second. And a second by Mary. Is there any discussion? Yeah. Just a note um, for folks who might be watching that Director Stunkel did come to our last regular board meeting and provide a presentation around the proposal uh, for mini adventures and adventure club fees. So if anyone's interested in the details of that, that would be available um, whatever date that was, the end of February. February. Thank yep. you, February 28th meeting. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Any other discussion? All right, we will proceed to vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries, thank you. Um, next, we will do our um, reports from members of the board and uh, we will start with Julie. Okay, um, last week I met with, um, um, I met with, <laughs> See, this is what happens when you throw but it I'm at me sorry. Like that. I'm I sorry. was not expecting yep. to go first. Yep. <laughs> uh, um, um, I met with um, Ms. Stemvik, and we talked about the um, finance, um, kind of just from a treasurer's perspective. And um, I'll be bringing a treasure when I get the treasurer report. I'll be selecting some transactions to review and. Um, 
I'll discuss that and kind of tell you what what I found or didn't find or whatever in the in my update every time um, we have one, and that's usually the first board meeting of the month. Um, the other is I went Friday, uh, Monday. I was just at the Fridley um, City Council meeting. And um, I discussed the fact that North Park is in Fridley, and I gave them um, some kind of talking points that I had was discussing that the school was recently renovated, and it's now rebranded with a focus on STEM, and that Mr. Ted got the award for, um, you know, General Mills Teacher of the Month, and the board, the city council was really excited and very. Um, supportive and they would like a tour of North Park so we want to get that on the schedule for um, Superintendent Stem Stemvik I'll let her know or you can let her know however that goes um, and then they also invited us to the April 15th fundraiser at Springbrook Nature Center um, tickets are online and it's a uh, it's to raise money for a new um, children's play area so the the current equipment is getting beat up too much and I guess it, it's they're trying to raise about hundred and fifty thousand dollars they think they'll get that they've already sold like a hundred tickets and I think tickets are like sixty or sixty five dollars so that's that great excellent report thank you <laughs> Michelle Hello. can you guys hear me no yep. I don't know I don't think so. I don't think no. so. My light's not green either. Yeah. Oh, oh, just hit the button. Oh, do I? No. Nope. I can talk very loudly, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know for the recording, though. Sufficient? Yep, it's for the recording, though. Yep. Uh, so we'll need two seconds. I don't know what this means. Sorry, guys. It happened. Maybe it just got unplugged by accident. You want me to just click on <sighs> Oh, that's a good idea. Lorian. Now she's got two. From Mueller. I'm that's why flash. she's arch. Look <laughs> at you. Such a boss. You get so much. You're very <laughs> um, So, um, I have a few things. Uh, so, a couple weeks ago, because it's, it's been a minute since we've given anything, um, I did go to a performance arts night at the high school. Um, at the suggestion of uh, Chair Mueller, and it was it was pretty good. Um, I, I did dip out a little bit at the end, but when I was there, the art was amazing. Um, uh, me and my husband went, um, and it was just very nice to see all of the art and hear uh, the music, see the passion in our kids. They were just amazing. So that was a great night. Um, I love uh, watching people in their element. So it was great. And then um, I did attend um, uh, Columbia Heights did have uh, the Kohai Khan and the um, Kara Okan uh, that night as well. So uh, during the day, uh, my husband and I took our daughter and we played video games and had fun um, doing some, some retro video game play and enjoying some, some nerding out. And then at night, um, we, we sang and, and had fun and enjoyed ourselves. So that was a great event put on um, for um, Columbia Heights. And then um, I had a meeting with, um, with Arian Kokish. And uh, um, so during the uh, meeting that I mentioned before with, um, with the Urban League, where we got together to put focus on um, the equity, um, reframing the, the framework, things like that, um, we met up with other parents in the community. Um, there was a woman there who was trying to implement um, well, she actually came up with the idea at this uh, workshop um, to try to come up with a bill to pay um, parent leaders in the schools. Uh, she actually uh, is in Hopkins, but uh, this bill would potentially be able to be used in other districts as well. So um, we were able to uh, help her uh, uh, kind of work out a meeting with Senator Kanesh to where she could help her and guide her in the right direction. So that was a great meeting uh, to be a part of because it would help me to learn more and uh, be a part of something that could potentially be great for uh, myself potentially because I am a parent leader as well. Um, so that was a great meeting to be a part of, um, especially around this time when everything is happening. Um, so maybe not this session, but we're working on it. Um, so more to come on that. Um, uh, um, a little bit on uh, Principal Sausick, who 
uh, facilitated a connection between me, uh, myself, and Marcus Flynn, who's the executive director of Black Men Teach. Um, we are actually going to have a meeting tomorrow um, just to connect and kind of uh, set up just uh, that initial meeting. Um, we might be able to, you know, come up with ideas together. Um, I know he has some ideas for a bill as well. Uh, we just want to kind of connect and, you know, initiate uh, that that uh, joining of minds. Um, uh, we had the joint meeting with the city council last week, um, and I also attended um, the the Buy Nothing event that uh, Mayor Marquez Sevilla had this past weekend, which was awesome. I just want to put it out there that if anyone comes across this again, that you may want to attend. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. And uh, I mean, my daughter went away with more things than I did, but it was still a pretty nice event um, uh, to, that you could just go to and just, if you need something and you see it, you can just grab it. It was really nice uh, that this was being put on and that people just came and out of the kindness of their heart just said, hey, I have some things, if you need them, take them. Uh, so that was a very nice um, thing that Columbia Heights did. My last thing is that uh, I was invited to be a part of um, the panel that they're going to have um, in April, coming up on April 19th for um, school safety um, in Columbia Heights, uh, which is uh, very nice. Uh, and I'm, I'm excited to be a part of that, that discussion. I am very sorry that was very long. No, <laughs> thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Laura. I, I'm impressed. I'm usually the one that rambles on. <laughs> <laughs> and mine, I'm going to make mine real short. Um, um, so I attended the 916 um, uh, monthly board meeting, um, which was, um, was fairly routine, not a whole lot of new stuff going on. And then uh, the gala that was immediately following it um, uh, the next day uh, for the foundation. Um, that one was really cool. The fund of need was um, uh, the the fund of need was uh, for uh, getting transportation to bring um, the ALC students to um, to uh, out to like college experiences and stuff like that. Um, because they're trying really hard now with the ALC programs to be able to give them to give these students like the full the full range of stuff. You know that that our, our students at the high school, you know, are able to participate in that. These are our students too, but they they're just getting an alternative education, and this gives them the ability to apply for scholarships, um, do the SATs, and all that other stuff. Be able to have that college experience, you know. So I thought that was really cool. So and lots of generosity going around. Please, everybody needs to come next year. It was it was a really it's a really nice venue. Um, and um, it's just really for a great cause. Um, and then, of course, um, the joint council meeting, city council meeting, that was really great to get together. Um, you know, breaking the ice, um, new board, new council, and um, I, I really hope that we can do that again in the future. Okay. That's pretty much it. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you. Jessica. Sure. So I also attended the joint school board city council meeting last week. Um, and then I spent some time um, going through familiarizing myself with all of the legislative priorities of both the Minnesota School Board Association and the Association of Metropolitan School Districts and kind of looking at where those legislative priorities um, align or maybe uh, diverge a little bit and then also how those priorities align with some of our goals here in Columbia Heights as, as a member organization. Um, so they have a lot of materials online about those priorities. Um, in part because they um, had or will be having their um, days at the Capitol, their advocacy days. Um, I think AMSDs was last week and MSBAs is next Monday. Um, so that information is out there and as we're about halfway through session, just trying to get a sense of how the bill introductions are tracking um, or not with some of those legislative priorities, some of which um, we heard uh, uh, some some support for um, from our community members or teachers earlier in the meeting. So um, I spent some time doing that and then um, just had some conversations with community members about um, uh, topics in our schools um, as I've been out and about, including at the Buy Nothing event. I saw Michelle there. It was a it was a great event. I brought lots of um, books um, that my, my children have outgrown. Um, and those went right away, which was awesome. And um, some of the books I had left over, I was able to make a connection with uh, stocking some of the little libraries around town, including some um, in our school sites. So thanks. Great. Thank you. Mary. 
Okay, um, <clears throat> so I also attended the joint session of the City Council and School Board and the um, Cole High Con that uh, Michelle mentioned earlier. It was pretty fantastic. Um, just to see a lot of community members. I saw, you know, member Medeiros' family was there. It was fantastic. Got to see them playing games. Um, so I spent a lot of time playing games, singing songs later in the night. It was pretty great. Um, I attended Valley View game night last week, which was also pretty great. It, we, um, Mr. Kuhlman said that he thought that they had about 250 families, wow. like students, and families show up. Um, it was just really well attended, and everybody had such a great time. Um, and then I had um, I had a phone call with Superintendent Stenvik last week. I've had several conversations with Council Member Spriggs. Um, I also had a chance to talk with uh, Senator Kunesh about um, funding our schools, but also specifically about our library media center and um, the supports that not just our school needs but you know we're seeing this sort of around the metro and she shared with me the bill that she's introducing to help address those concerns specifically related to library media specialists um, and then i attended the subcommittee for policy and a meeting with chair mueller prior to this meeting I think that might be it. Great, thank you. Thank you. Um, last week I attended the chair meeting prior to the um, joint city council school board meeting with Laura was also there and Julie was at that joint meeting as well. She may not have said that, but um, <laughs> we were all there. Um, and I uh, agree that that was a great opportunity um, for some connection and continued connection with our um, city council counterparts. Um, I also attended the um, Family Center Parent Student Wellness event that the Parent Advisory Council put on um, here at the Family Center. Um, that was a really great event, um, talking with parents of our littlest learners um, and having some fun experience watching them do some crafts and, um, and just talking with parents too, so that was really fun. Um, as uh, Member Granlin said, um, I had a meeting with her. Um, I also had several conversations with Superintendent Stenvik. Um, I attended a high school band concert, um, and that was a lot of fun um, to see the students performing. Um, also then, that same week, it was like a performing arts <laughs> week, also went to performing arts night as well, um, which showcased um, both the visual arts with an art show, um, as well as our performing arts of our sixth through 12th graders, and it was really a great event. It was a lot of fun to see them. Um, I attended the subcommittee on policy um, prior to this meeting, which um, member um, <laughs> Houle was at as well, um, and the uh, chair meeting just prior to this. So, thank you all. Um, we have no superintendent's report tonight because our superintendent is um, taking care of our um, concert band and AP art students in New York City. They are. Um, seeing Camelot at the Lincoln Center currently. So um, they're having that great experience. Um, we'll see her next meeting. Um, next we have our K-12 activities update with Jake Henderson. Hello, thank you for having me. Um, and I should try to share my screen here. All right, can everyone see that? Yes, yep. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. Chair Mueller, members of the board, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I'll leave out Superintendent Senvik tonight because she is not here. Um, but our mission today or in Columbia Heights is creating worlds of opportunity for each and every learner, all belong, all succeed. And in our presentation tonight, We'll focus on all of our core values from community to innovation. Uh, tonight's presentation is just an informational item. There is no governance that will take place. So this is a winter activities update for you all. Uh, we've continued focusing on supporting our students, engaging our community, and creating inclusive 
uh, environments in our programs and trying, uh, striving to be as competitive as possible. Uh, if you look at the picture on the right here, you see Sophie Keither and Chi Chi Ni. These two were our AAA nominee award winners from Columbia Heights High School this year. Uh, that award is a Minnesota State High School League award uh, that celebrates achievements in athletics, uh, arts, and academics. Uh, so they did not move on to the region or past the region, um, but we had a really great group of students uh, really difficult decisions to choose uh, between students for these awards. So congratulations to them. Uh, next up, you'll see our participation numbers. Uh, overall, our participation numbers are, are looking pretty good, steady or growing. If you take a look down uh, near speech, you'll notice, oh, sorry, I think I left these, but this is not fall, these are all winter. Um, I obviously copied that, but these are all winter activities um, that you see up there. Uh, but if you take a look at speech, I'll draw your attention to that. That team has absolutely exploded this year. Um, and as a former math teacher, I really do love to look at the data, the graphics. I mean, I really get excited when I see some of this growth, and that's been a major focus of our activities department, uh, specifically coming out of COVID. Uh, but now for some of these programs, it's, it's not necessarily about growth in the numbers, but it's how, how are we gonna grow as a program? How do we become more competitive for some? Or how do we create a more positive inclusive culture? Or how do we intentionally and positively build some of these intangible skills that we want our students to have? How do we, you know, for some of them, it might not just be being competitive, but how do we take it to the next level and we may be able to compete for uh, at state or for a state championship. So we're really starting to dive into that uh, program by program, just based on uh, some of our participation numbers. And that's, that's pretty exciting stuff. Moving on, uh, our middle school and our high school teams, uh, sports specifically, had some very good competitive seasons. You'll notice we've got uh, some cheerleaders up there for the first time in a long time. And we teamed with Encore for this programming this year. And our booster club helped us out and provided uniforms for the team. But thank you to Elaine Graham, who had, uh, was heading the team up this year. It was a real positive experience for those students. And they provided some great energy at our home events. Continuing with some more athletics uh, update, we have Matthew Bermeo who placed third there in our uh, conference wrestling meet in his weight class. And we did have a swimmer qualify, as you can see up there for the uh, state champ or the state meet in the 100 fly and the 100 backstroke. His name is Isaac Garrison. He doesn't actually go to Columbia Heights High School. He's on our team. He's in a co-op with us from um, New Life Academy. But I had the pleasure of taking uh, the team down to the state meet at the U of M. It was an awesome time, uh, or a handful of the kids. I think I have brought seven students with me, student athletes with me to support him and uh, just experience the state meet. And they came out of there really excited um, and, and ready to work uh, with some goals of their own and making it to that, to that meet. So that was exciting to see. Moving on to our winter activities here. We had a fantastic winter of theater in Columbia Heights. I, I think I might have presented on this uh, before to you all, but uh, I don't think I actually had the honors yet from Spotlight, but we got 16 honors from the Spotlight Education Program for our production of The Adams Family. And our one act sections, which we hosted here at Columbia Heights, I think for the first time, uh, we were able to move our, our one act uh, on to the section finals again, I think for the third year in a, in a row, which is pretty fantastic. And just a few weeks ago, uh, CA performed the Lion King Jr. I know there were lots of families out to view that. My own kids were there and they continue, uh, even though it was a couple weeks ago, playing Lion King and then singing the songs here at home, which is pretty awesome. We have a 
we've got a staff, not everyone on our theater staff, but many of our theater staff have now been together for a couple or a few years. And they're, they're just doing a fantastic job and creating some really awesome experiences for uh, our students. Continuing with our, our winter activities, we've had uh, several other seasons come to an end here. Our robotics team finished up in January. Science Bowl competed for the first time, at least under the activities branch, and our Knowledge Bowl made it to the sub-regional uh, competition. Our speech team, as I mentioned before, has exploded, and we took second just by a few points in the uh, Trimetro Conference meet that was hosted um yeah just a little over a week ago that we hosted here at columbia heights um so pretty exciting for that team as well and one thing that really gets overlooked in the activities world is our fine arts uh we kind of team with the high school in fine arts and our tri-metro conference really does have a lot of opportunities and experiences for fine arts throughout the school year and our conference, specifically with a couple of the new schools that are coming into it, is really committed to providing more of those experiences or expanding those opportunities uh, so that groups can get together and uh, work collaboratively and learn from clinicians. So at the end of January, at the end of January, we had band, choir, and art students participate in the TriMetro Fine Arts Festival at the Academy of Holy Angels. And as we, our uh, update wraps up here, uh, we've continued to grow as leaders, um, meeting a few times over the winter, just building community of leaders, sharing some of our experiences, having some fun together, playing some games, uh, and really trying to give some of the students a voice into our activities programming. And, and then finally building on some of those themes that were presented to us at the Together We Make a Difference conference. Well, and that brings us to the end of our activities update. I'm sure I left out something, or maybe you all have some questions, but I really do thank you for your time um, tonight. Great. Thank you, Mr. Henderson. I think, um, wow, there are a lot of kids <laughs> doing a lot of things. Yep. Um, but anybody have any questions or comments? Michelle. Um, sorry, this may be a silly question, um, but is speech team like debate team? No, it's not. Like, well, it's similar. Yes, okay. we. I don't know fully about debate because we have not had it here in my time. Uh, but there's, I believe, 13, it's 11 or 13, I think it's 13 different categories um, that uh, our team prepares speeches for. And so I want to say it was either six or seven of our students took first out of the 13 different categories, which was phenomenal. And mm -hmm. Crystal, who is our activities facilitator in our, in, in that district, we were both texting back and forth and we were like, we gotta be taking first in this. Mm -hmm. um, wow. We didn't, unfortunately, but it was very close. <laughs> well, congratulations. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great question. Yeah. Other questions, Mary. Um, first of all, like it's Joel, it's, brings me so much joy to see all of our students. It's very surprising when I don't recognize my own children until <laughs> member Medeiros hey, is yeah, like. like <laughs> um, so that's pretty fantastic. Um, I'm curious, uh, is mock trial considered a, an activity or is that done through um, another, uh, is that captured in another way? Do you know, Jay? I don't, uh, it's not in our activities programming. I know that they just, did they just finish up? So I, I don't have mm -hmm. a ton of information about mock trial uh, at CA, mm -hmm. but um, it's not in activities. I don't know if it's Encore. It's Encore. We're it having some nods in the room that it yep. is Encore. <laughs> okay. our, our CA, you our know, CA staff here. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And we, we try to team with Encore and we try to promote mm -hmm. all the programming that we, we can. Um, and then not just make it, you know, or about whatever is under the activities branch, but yeah. um, but I don't have a ton of information for you on that one. No, that's okay. Thank you. You had a ton of information about lots of other things that our students are doing. So thank you so much. Great. Any other questions? 
Jessica. Yes. Not a question, just a comment. Thank you for sharing the information with us. I, um, like others on the board, find it really energizing and uplifting mm -hmm. to see the diversity of activities that are available to our students and for such a small district um, to be able to have so much available to our students to explore and to support one another and to just try things, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and sort of define success in different ways for themselves um, while, while being a, a scholar in our district is just phenomenal. So um, I really appreciate the information and um, hope that we can have future updates like this too to, to continue to see those programs and how they're growing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, I, Laura. I just have a quick question, and maybe you don't have these numbers um, at hand right now, but um, what percentage of our students are, are taking part in one or more activities? Mm -hmm. You know, I know we have a very high participation rate for our student body. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't have those off the top of my head. I didn't head. think I so. I we had <laughs> over um, 500 do fall activities I'll be honest with you, I did not count. I can go back to that <laughs> and count um, the, the table. Um, but I know we had some high participation and then uh, there is a piece when we do some MDE reporting mm -hmm. in October that I do have to pull all of those uh, full numbers and then additionally, uh, you know, what are not, who are not duplicated numbers. Um, because obviously some of our students participate in several of these different activities mm -hmm. um, throughout the year and so unduplicated numbers I could grab that data for you and send it on your on the way I, I, I know it was an offhand chance but I know we have a really high participation rate and with all those great programs and activities uh, there, there's it looks like there's something for everybody yeah and perhaps something that uh, Jake that you can provide for us when if you're doing a, the spring update in the fall um, or after you get all the numbers from this academic year, like you said, when you do your reporting, if you could share it with us at that time, that would be great. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, one thing that's it's somewhat difficult is, is similar if you if you bring in the, like the idea of the mock trial mm -hmm. is I don't always have all that number, mm -hmm. all those numbers. I don't know everything that's going on. We try, I think, better than we have in the past just to incorporate and throw uh, all the information out whether it's on Instagram or in our mm -hmm. activity updates weekly, just so that people can go to one place and, and get it. But, um, you know, we do have other programming that's also going on that I might not have data for too. And so I think some of those numbers get lost even when you report that data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, understood. Great. Thank you very much for your time. Thank uh, you all for your time. Next, we have our Summer Academy Joint Powers Agreement with uh, Director Tuckrell and uh, looks like our Research and Assessment Coordinator, Disa Fabek. Thank you. Good evening, Chair Mueller, members of the board. I'm here with our Research and Assessment Coordinator, Disa Fabek, to talk about Summer Academy, including the updated Joint Powers Agreement. Our mission in Columbia Heights Public Schools of creating worlds of opportunity for each and every learner, all belong, all succeed, and really focusing in on the core values of this one for collaboration, integrity, and innovation. And our core values in Columbia Heights are aligned with our Columbia Heights Public Schools Board of Education equity statement. Tonight, um, Disa and I are here to share about Summer Academy and the Joint Powers Agreement, and we will be returning on March 28th for um, recommendation to approve the Summer Academy Joint Powers Agreement. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Coordinator Fabek. Good evening, Chair Mueller, members of the board. We wanted to give a little background on Summer Academy. So as you can see, it's about a three week summer program that's hosted at Columbia Heights Public Schools currently, but really 12 districts come together. And the purpose of this is this really challenging environment and there's it's a lot of different options for students to really inspire them and have them use their creativity and real world problem solving. So it's really both um, academically and socially pushing for our students and the students that attend. So you can see some of the pictures up here. There's a variety of courses offered that families choose for their students and register them for. 
So for this year, 2023, it's still hosted in June. We didn't spill into July, so June 13th through the 29th. There's going to be, uh, most days are going to be in the morning, 8 a.m. to noon. There are two extended days, and that's typical each year, and that's due to field trips. So a lot of these classes are going out, experiencing things related to the course that they uh, registered for. And because Columbia Heights currently hosts it, we have two buildings that spills over into two. We have Highland that is pretty much overtaken, and then uh, some rooms in the high school as well. Uh, for 2023, we have 28 course offerings, and that ranges from students currently in grade 1 through 7. Um, so they're going to be in grades 2 through 8. And our Cole Heights students have a discounted tuition because we are the fiscal and uh, physical host. So it is $440 per Disa, student. Disa, can I interrupt yeah. you real quick? We're having a little trouble hearing you on our end. I'm not sure if you can oh. be a little bit closer to your microphone. Yes. Is That's this a little be better? Yes, okay. thank you. <laughs> I'll use my teacher voice here. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, just starting back at the middle here. So the tuition is slightly different for our Columbia Heights Public School students. Because we are the physical and financial host, there is written into the joint powers agreement that this is going to be a reduced tuition. Uh, we do also have ample scholarship funds available, and we readily supply those out to families um, that reach out for this. And all families have the opportunity. It doesn't have to be a certain criteria to be um, applying for the scholarship funds. We also, as Jake was saying, have to include some graph and some data because we love looking at that. Um, our enrollment over the years has been increasing, and then, of course, the pandemic hit, and we had some shake up so we're still recovering slightly from that and this year we're hoping to be up in the high to mid 30s for enrollment for our columbia heights public school students and we do that through a lot of active outreach so we open up a lot of the communication everything is available in english and spanish and we had somali as well this year um, we're having our homeschool liaisons at the schools reach out um, our school social worker and a school psychologist have reached out to families this year of students that they think, wow, I think they'd be really successful in this area or this class or in this opportunity. Um, we even come talk to some of our classes. I, I go and I advertise this a little bit of this would be a great opportunity for you, especially a lot of our LEAP students at Valley View and Highland, but as well as North Park, we go and talk to them about this. As I mentioned previously, scholarship opportunities are available for any and all families of Heights students that are attending. And then uh, just uh, continuing to increase enrollment because once students attend, we have a lot of interest to attend again. So keeping those families engaged, making sure they're thinking about next year, you know, you liked this class, what might you like in the future years? So the Joint Powers had some outdated language. So there were some changes made this year by the director of Summer Academy and superintendents are signing off on this. And so there was some removal of language to really open up our target audience a little bit more and having the audience be a little bit more um, clear as to students who really want that enrichment opportunities, that it is really rigorous but it doesn't have to be rigorous for a student who is high in math achievement. It might be someone really you know, high achieving and interested in music. There would be an opportunity for that student as well. Um, also the physical host, uh, that we are updating the language or the language has been updated that it'll be until this year, so June 30th, 2023. And then next year, the physical host will be elsewhere. Tisa, can you speak up again? I'm sorry, we're, oh, you're faded yeah. out on us a little bit. I'm sorry about that. Mm. All right, so moving to um, a new physical host for 2024. So that was updated language in the Joint Powers Agreement for this year. Uh, an additional change is gonna be for the fiscal host. So Columbia Heights Public Schools typically was the fiscal host for several years. I want to say 10 years or more, and that has actually shifted to Matamidi Public Schools for this year. So that's active this year, 2022-23. And then there's an additional stipend in the Joint Powers Agreement because there is some software that has been utilized for registration for families. So the LEO registration software was used this year for registration, which opened um, March 11th, so last Saturday. 
The superintendent names have also been updated to reflect the current superintendents. So we have our own superintendent Zena Stendik, and then the Matamidai superintendent as well because they are the uh, fiscal host. We will be um, returning to the board on March 28th and asking and recommending to approve the summer joint powers agreement. And Chair Mueller will actually be the one to sign off on the joint powers agreement if approved. And we wanted to add in that, and I know Superintendent Stendick has added an update in previous updates about Summer Academy and giving background, Columbia Heights fully supports Summer Academy. Um, the reason for changing physical and fiscal hosts is more about staffing and capacity. Mm -hmm. We've had a difficult time the last couple of years in terms of turnover in the financial department and the finance department, a lot of grants with the COVID grants that they've become really busy with those and to be able to support Summer Academy for what they need has been difficult. As well as the physical host in terms of our staffing to support the custodians, the food service, all of those pieces together. So Columbia Heights will continue to support the opportunity for our students and ensure that we support them wherever the program they move to. Um, but looking to move that program physically and fiscally this year for fiscal. Great. Thank you. Questions? Yeah, a couple questions. Sure. So um, just thinking about uh, moving the physical host from Columbia Heights into the future, um, how will that impact um, the ability of our students um, to attend in terms of transportation? jump in there, Disa. I talked with Superintendent Stendick about that, that we want to ensure we're removing any barriers to our students attending. And so we are going to be reaching out to nearby districts, such as Fridley and others close by, to see if we can work together on that transportation piece and support with the cost so we can support the transportation for our students to go to the new location. Thank you. So it's in the works. Um, and then I just had one additional yeah. question, which is just about representation. And I think you, you said this a little bit, but I just want to clarify. So currently, or I guess for the, if this joint priorities agreement is approved, um, we can continue the current structure where we'd have two representatives from our district on the Summer Academy Board. And then when we're no longer the ho physical host site, we would still have representation on the board through our superintendent. Is that correct? Yes, we do. Um, you are correct. We currently have two people as we are the physical and fiscal host. We were the fiscal and in future years, we have one spot which can be the superintendent or a designee. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Laura. Um, um, now, I understand a couple of years back um, pre-pandemic, we were actually, because of the enormous amount of growth that uh, the Summer Academy had had, that, um, that there had been some discussion about having um, twin sites. Um, and I was wondering whether or not that's still something that, that might be not this year, but still being talked about. Lisa, you can jump in if you want. At this time, they have not brought that conversation forward. Many districts share concerns about it, about where it would be hosted in the capacity of districts. And with the enrollment not has not been increasing since COVID, we've been stayed pretty stagnant, pretty just pretty much the same. So the conversation has not been brought up. Lisa, I'm not sure if you have other pieces to add. No, I think that's absolutely accurate, Tara. It's um, definitely a goal because I think there are a lot of students that would benefit and value this, but with enrollment um, not reaching the numbers we had anticipated pre-COVID, I know that conversation is just sort of um, paused for now. Okay, thank you. Yes, I do have one additional question. Um, when it comes to, you, you talked about um, financial support through scholarships for families, um, and I'm wondering about the actual process of registration. Uh, prior to my time on the board, I, I think I remember at one point the district was um, offering to assist families um, that might need some help with registration that maybe weren't, didn't have um, ready internet access for the online registration or maybe weren't able to log in, you know, the day registration opens if they're working on, on a Saturday. Is that something that the district is continuing to work with families on or is there support for families in that, in that way? 
Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we we hosted, as you recall accurately, these sort of night registration support nights pre-pandemic. And then when the pandemic hit, but Summer Academy was still offering classes last year in 2022, we shifted that more to a school-based support. So having the homeschool liaisons call, if it was a language support, um, reaching out to me if there was some sort of scheduling conflict or internet issue in a variety of capacities. Sometimes that would be telling their homeroom teacher and then they're contacting me. So the system looks a little different. The process looks different this year, mm -hmm. but we're hoping to go back to that in the future because that was really powerful. We saw a lot of families be able to register um, for whatever, you know, whatever reason it was that they weren't, that they were needing support for. I agree. Thank you. I think that's really important support. Thank you. And then I just have one question. I know that our students, as you said, because we've been the host, um, had a $100 um, fee reduction. I'm assuming that goes away when we are not no longer the host, but there will still be scholarships available for our students as well. Yes, absolutely. That is something we want to remove all barriers if that is a barrier. So that's something that Tara and I talk about often. You know, if it's transportation or if it's tuition costs, we want to support the families in that. But you are correct that $100 would be uh, not given to us uh, with a fiscal or a physical change, but other opportunities are available. Great. Thank you very much. Any other questions? All right. We will see you at our next meeting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have the 2023-2024 school calendar with Director Bennett. Good evening to Mueller members of the board. Tonight, I'm here to present to you the draft of the 2023-2024 school calendar. So again, our mission, creating worlds of opportunity for each and every learner, all belong, all succeed. And the core values um, focus on collaboration, respect, and innovation. And all the core values are aligned with the Columbia Heights Public School Board Education Committee Statements. So the committee is made up of parents, um, guardians, building staff, and district-wide staff. We met a few times this last spring um, to develop the calendar. And the goal of the calendar committee is to develop and recommend a 2023-2024 school calendar um, based on the best interest of our students and our families. Um, and again, we must adhere to any contractual obligations. So looking at the calendar, um, school will start for students after Labor Day, which is September 5th. Kindergarten and pre-K-4 have a little bit different starting dates just to get the little kids um, in and acclimated to the school without having the entire class there both days. The last day for students will be June 6th. Winter break will be scheduled for December 25th through January 2nd. Um, graduation is still a TBD. Um, the high school is working with parents and families to see if um, we want to make some changes to the date we have graduation. So um, we will have graduation, we just have to figure out the date. Um, we do have scheduled flex learning days and data days. So this year we did early release days with the day to day afterwards. And we're gonna change that to a flex learning day where students learn from home um, with the day to day in the afternoon. And that was based on feedback, a lot of it involving um, transportation for the early release days. And it was just better for families, teachers um, to have um, not have to do the early release. And then looking to pair the data days with in-service days. So having a data day <coughs> the next day being an in-service day so teachers can really um, dive into that um, data that they worked on. So in the packet was a copy of the draft calendar um, that the committee has put together. The calendar will be brought forward for approval at the next meeting. And we're also going to try something new this year and meet again um, later this spring to develop the 2024-2025 just a draft calendar. A lot of districts are moving to two-year calendars. So we're gonna try to do that. It would just be in draft form until it's board approved um, probably next school year. So I can answer any questions. Great, thank you. Okay, questions? Thank you. Mary. Yes, 
Um, can you tell me um, how are people chosen to join the committee to talk about the calendar? Yes. Um, so I reach out to the principals and ask them to select um, a parent, and then we try to get a high school student to participate, but that person couldn't make it. Mm. Um, but we did reach out and try to find somebody. Um, so I really leave more of the building, and they, the principals also bring a building representative um, to it. Um, it also involves district staff, so directors from different departments, um, principals are on it. Um, gosh, I, I don't total in front of me of how many people are on it, but we had quite a good group with a lot of different perspectives this year, so it was nice to hear. Awesome, wonderful, thank you. Other questions? I have one. Um, and I know that the committee puts this together and that there are staff members um, on this. I'm looking at the, the winter break, um, mm -hmm. which I, I'm assuming, and I will be honest, I haven't looked at it that it was in our packet yet, but I'm assuming that it, there's a weekend in there somewhere, but that seems like winter break is really short. Yeah. Um, has, what has been the feedback from the building staff on, on that break? It's interesting because we had parents and some, I think one of the parents works at a different school and she said their school had two weeks and it was too much time with their kids. <laughs> um, so it really, what I, most people were just fine with the amount of time for winter break this year. Um, and we try to look at other districts too and see what Minneapolis, um, Ridley and that they're doing too. So I guess I didn't get any pushback that it's too short. Okay, all right, thank you. Any other questions, Jessica? I had a question about uh, the week of spring break. I know this year uh, the district made a, a shift into April to align, well, for a variety of reasons, but my understanding is one of the reasons is it aligned with Minneapolis. Um, and so I was curious as to, um, I guess, the rationale to shifting that back again to where it had been previously in March. Yes, and we look at many things. Um, part of it's testing, some of it's spring activities, um, I've been doing the calendar committee, I think this is my sixth year heading it, and it was the first year the committee was like all on board, like this is the best week okay. to have it um, based on many factors. Um, and then this year we will have no school for students and staff um, on April 10th to celebrate or for in recognition of Eid. Wonderful. Great. Um, Thank you. I did. I did notice that date in April, and I was. I was happy to see that, as well as um, looking in November and seeing that election day will be a non-student day. I think that will be really helpful um, to alleviate some of the logistical challenges, and then just some of the like security concerns related to um, having polling places um, at our at some of our schools. So, thank you for that. And then I just had one comment. I just wanted to thank you very much for um, and to the committee for for this what I know was a very challenging task. I've served as a parent representative on the calendar committee in the past. And it, I mean, it really is, it's like um, calendar Tetris. It's a really, really uh, difficult um, set of constraints that you're working under um, for both the committee to discuss and kind of negotiate those things. And then um, also you sort of in, in bringing forward sort of some of those initial um, parameters and trying to make things fit. So um, thank you for that. Yep, yep. Mary, I just thank you for that. Yes, I've also been on that committee and it was delightful. I actually really enjoyed it and also because it helped me understand all these things. And I think one thing that Jessica had sort of mentioned um, and I wanted to just reiterate as well is I know one of the biggest challenges is trying to incorporate like not too many days without a break because kids need it and staff need it. And so um, I'm really impressed with the sort of the layout of everything and the, um, the thoughtfulness and care that went into spacing all of these things. So thank you so much for all of that work. And it, it looks great. I'm excited for that. Thank you. Um, I, do, I have one question. Um, can you um, just explain again, I, I didn't quite catch, catch it the first time, why the graduation date hasn't been set? Um, what I've been told is that the high school is working um, with a parent committee to see if um, they want to keep it Thursday evening or move it to a Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, so we just didn't want to put something on the calendar and then if um, a committee or 
they decide to change it. So um, I can check with um, Superintendent Stenvik to see exactly when that will be mm -hmm. announced. And maybe if they can decide in the next few weeks, I can get it on the calendar then before it gets board approved. Yeah, that I that would be preferable in my thoughts. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. I'll make a note of that. Any other questions? All right. Um, next, we'll move to life and long-term disability renewals with um, so with Director Bennett. Next thing I get to talk about is group life and long-term disability bids. Um, so again, our mission, create a world of opportunity for each and every learner, all belong, all succeed. And the core value I would focus on would be collaboration. And again, they're aligned with the Columbia Heights Public School Board equity statement. And just a little background, um, Minnesota statute does require the district to go out for bid every five years. Uh, we work collaboratively with NIS, which is our, which is National Sur Insurance Services, which um, helps us with um, our health benefits um, and many other um, insurance questions and services we need. We had five carriers quoted on group life and then four carriers quoted on long-term disability. And looking at group life, the two were Madison National Life, which is the incumbent, and Securian Life. And then for long-term disability, it was Madison National Life um, as the incumbent. So the recommendation we will bring forward, and this is in collaboration with working again with NIS, um, who helps many districts, that we remain with Nash, Mad Madison National Life for both group life and LTD. It was the lowest carrier on a package basis matching benefits. Um, so we'll seek board approval at the March 28th meeting. Let's answer any questions. Great, thank you. Questions for Director Bennett? Um, I want Director Bennett, um, can you tell us what these um, kind of percentage increases, if any, we're looking at for these bids that came in, that came in? Yeah, so it wasn't um, a huge difference between the two and they actually got a mass and national life to come down a little bit more. So they had to look at, um, it's based on there's the active rate and then um, that security had a retiree rate, which was higher. Um, so I'd have to, let me see if I can find the number real quick. Um, I, can, I can get you the exact number. Yeah, I would say if you can't find it now, if you could have that um, included in our packet prior yep. to the March 28th meeting. I sure can. Great, thank you very much. Any other questions? All right, thank you, Director Bennett. Um, thank you very next much. Next we will move on to our achievement and integration budget uh, with Executive Director Nambwe. And we took one of your microphones, so you gotta <laughs> swing that over. I realized your original one was never plugged in. That was, yep. you know, so, yeah, you're I'll, good. I'll slide over. Yes. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Chair Mueller and members of the board, good evening. Um, a few weeks ago, two weeks ago to be exact, I presented the 2024 Achievement and Integration uh, Budget as well as the goals and plan for the achievement and integration plan for 2023 through 2026. So I'm here tonight to request an approval uh, for the 2024 budget uh, for a million sixty-three thousand seven hundred and thirty-two dollars and the plan for 2023 to 2026. Great, thank you. Can I get a motion um, to approve the achievement and integration uh, budget of $1,028,892.14 along with $34,840 in incentive revenue um, as well as the uh, um, achievement integration plan that was presented at the February 28th, 2023 meeting. So moved. Motion by Mary, is there a second? Second. Second by Michelle. Oh, Any well, discussion? Well. <laughs> All right, hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. And again, I think, um, real quick, Jessica mentioned previously that if anybody is watching wants more information on that, that was presented in detail at the um, February 28th meeting. Um, next, we'll move on to board topics. Does anybody have any board topics? Um, I just have one. Yeah. Um, at that uh, 916, it will be hosting its monthly uh, oh, tour. Yeah. Yeah. tour. Are you speaking in oh. yeah. um, That uh, um, at Northeast Metro 916, there's the monthly um, school or program tour. Um, and this month on the 22nd, um, they will be uh, touring uh, Pencalo Education Center as well as Be Bel Air and the auditory program. So if somebody is interested in participating with that, I'm going to have to send them over to Dawn who can send it on. So great. Um, that's a, it's, it's great to see some of the, uh, the different innovations that are happening you know, and um, just how they can benefit our students. I know Pencalo is a little further, but um, it does, uh, does serve a very special um, needs uh, portion, um, you know, that, that we, we just can't pr provide with that additional behavioral support, you know, for autism. So, Great. anyway, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Laura. Jessica, did you have something? Yes, I was just going to announce uh, our, that the Highland is hosting their book bash uh, on Thursday this week, March 16th. It's from 6 to 7.30, um, and it should be lots of fun. There's going to be... Uh, bingo with lots of uh, book prizes. The book fair is going on. They're going to have read alouds, uh, special guests, um, maybe some costume special guests is what <laughs> I what I hear. Um, so I invite uh, anyone to attend that and kind of get to know Highland a little bit. What time was that? Six to seven thirty. Great, thank you. Any other board topics? All right, hearing none, we'll adjourn this meeting at 8.